Next presenting company is Targimte and with us we have CEO Per Nolén. Welcome. Thank you. So Targimte is an oncology biotech company. We develop tumor targeting antibodies and ADCs for treatment of aggressive cancer. Targimte was founded on the discovery of a novel cancer target. And based on this, we have built a pipeline of first-in-class products. And based on that, we are now taking the company to public listing. So let me introduce you to Taginta. Taginta is today a subsidiary, a subsidiary of the stem cell company Xintela. Xintela has taken the decision to spin out or spin off Taginta as an independent and self-finance company. And that will happen as soon as possible. And then after that, we will take Taginta to public listing on first north growth market. So what's special about Taginta? Taginta is differentiated from most other companies by the in-house discovery of a novel cancer target, Integrin Alpha 10 Beta 1. This cancer target is the basis for our pipeline and the fact that it was discovered in-house has allowed us to generate an exceptional patent protection. We have protection for the products, of course, but also for the target. And we can prevent any other competitors to develop anti-integrin alpha-10 antibodies for treatment of cancer for the next 20 years or so. So we have two products. We have, uh, including these, an ADC. An ADC is a conjugated antibody. And as you know, this is a very hot area that has grown tremendously over the last few years. That has mainly to do with major technology advancements. And as a result, a number of major approvals for potential blockbuster ADCs over the last few years. The business model for Taginta is to outlicense products early. Now, we all know that's challenging. In order to be successful, you need either a unique target or a unique technology. Also, you need to be well positioned in a very hot market. Now, Targenta check all those parameters. We have a novel target and we are really well positioned in the ADC area, which is becoming extremely hot. Also, in addition, we have a lot of experience from preclinical successful partnerships. In the board, we have Martin de Chateau, who founded and then struck a deal with BMS, a $500 million deal with his company Cormorant in 2016. Also myself, I have experience and I was instrumental for the deal between Alligator and Johnson & Johnson. In 2015, it was a 700 million US dollar deal. And that again was on a preclinical antibody asset. Well positioned, but actually not having a unique target. So, Targenta, we have the target. And if we look at Integrin, Integrin Alpha 10 Beta 1, this is a member of the Integrin receptor family. So what are Integrins? These are receptors that allow cells in tissues to adhere to the surroundings, to attach to the surroundings. And this is really important for the well-being of cells in tissues. And that's reflected by a number of approvals of drugs targeting integrins that's already on the market. Integrin alpha 10 beta 1 is specifically expressed on cancer cells. And it has a very important function, promoting cancer cell proliferation, migration, and survival. And of course, if you block these signals, there will be effects preventing tumors from growing and from spreading and from metastasizing. But what's also really important on the target is the extremely selective expression. There's high expression on certain aggressive cancers like triple negative breast cancer and glioblastoma, whereas there's extremely low expression in normal tissue. You have one example here on the right hand side, what you can see in green. This is surface expression of integrin alpha 10 beta 1 on glioblastoma cells. And you can see the strong expression compared to other cells. It's expressed on glioblastoma, but also on triple negative breast cancer. But, and those are our initial lead indications. Triple negative breast cancer. This is 
aggressive breast cancer that lacks receptors for most of the common treatments today. So there are basically no targets present on the cells that can be addressed by current treatments. They are negative for HER2, for estrogen and for progesterone. And therefore well, there's also really poor prognosis. Five year survival in the range of 12%. It's also quite a large market. Around 300,000 patients every year get triple negative breast cancer. And of course, as a result, it's a large market in terms of money. 2.1 billion US dollars are the sales in 2025 projection. You can see an uh, image on the lower part, and that's a typical lobular and ductal expression of uh, the cancer in triple negative breast cancer. And in this case, it's stained by integrin alpha 10 beta 1. On the right hand side, we have glioblastoma. It's even more aggressive. It's the most aggressive form and most common form of bra brain cancer. And the five year su survival is extremely poor, around 3%. It is a smaller population, around 30,000 patients a year, but given the mortality, it's still a major, major market. And again, you can see the strong expression of integrin alpha 10 beta 1 in these cancers. And I should say that the target is expressed in other cancers, including pancreatic cancer, osteosarcoma, and melanoma. So our products. We have a pipeline, and the first product is TARG-10. It's a function-blocking integrin alpha-10 antibody. We have selected a lead candidate, it was done in the autumn. And we are now preparing a preclinical data package to move this into preclinical de development and towards the clinic. In almost in parallel, we are developing an ADC, a toxin conjugated antibody. That's an antibody uh, armed with an extremely powerful toxin. It's called TARG XX, and that's because we haven't yet selected a lead, but in fact, we will do so in the next few weeks. Uh, let me start by uh, addressing TARG 10. TARG 10 is a function blocking anti integrin alpha 10 antibody. And the effect is extremely selective on cancer cells expressing integrin alpha 10 on the surface. And the effect is to block proliferation and to block migration and tumor cell survival. And while doing so, we also get effect on tumor growth and on metastasis. We have demonstrated in in vivo models that we can reduce tumor growth both in triple negative breast cancer and in glioblastoma. On the right hand side, you can see a beautiful example on a dramatic effect on tumor growth in glioblastoma. This is a mouse model, and if you look, start the tumor challenge, the gray line is the control antibody where the tumor take off and grow really quickly. And the blue line is a dramatically reduced tumor growth after treatment with an integrin alpha 10 antibody. In addition, we have now demonstrated that we can almost completely prevent metastasis using these antibodies. These data are not yet public and it will be presented at the upcoming AACR meeting in April. So let's move to the conjugated antibody, TORG XX. TORG XX is an antibody drug conjugate or an ADC. We have today generated the leads and we are in the final stage of selecting the right lead. We spent the last few years in evaluating different toxins and different linkers. And in the end, we have, had, with, with the help of the partner, come up with the no new generation technologies and a really great product. The product induced extremely selective cell death in tumors expressing integrin alpha 10 on the surface. And you can see one example on the right hand side. This is again an in vivo model where we treat the animals with integrin alpha 10 antibodies armed with a toxin. And as you can see on the right hand side, there's strong induction of cell death when we treat with an integrin alpha 10 specific ADC, but no effect whatsoever on cell death if we have a similar toxin carrying antibody, but without targeting integrin alpha 10. We should remember that an ADC, it's an antibody that carries a toxin. So the antibody could be seen as a carrier, a device that allows us to take the toxin extremely specifically to its location where we want the effect. 
So as long as a toxin is bound to the antibody, it's inactive. And by that we can inject this construct into the circulation. It can travel through the body without making any damage. And once it binds to integrin alpha 10 beta 1 on cancer cells, it will be taken up and the toxin will be released specifically inside the, uh, the cancer cell. And there it will kill the cell. So that's uh, the new generation ADC technology. We have demonstrated also reduced tumor growth. Uh, we have shown that in glioblastoma and we are now assessing a number of different tumor models uh, and we'll, based on this data, select a lead candidate before the end of Q1, which is within a few weeks. So let me summarize. We have a pipeline and we have selected our first candidate, TORC10. We selected the lead and we started preclinical development and very soon we will also select a lead for our ADC, for our toxin conjugated antibody. Then we are now planning a spin-off of Targinta from the mother company and that will be followed by a public listing on First North growth market. What will happen on the operations is that we will start manufacturing, we will initiate production of both these products and that will be done in Q2. And that, of course, aims to generate material for future clinical trials that are set to take off in the second half of 2024. And to do so efficiently, we aim to find a partner in the preclinical stage in order to accelerate the products through clinical development and towards patients. Thank you so much. Thank you for your presentation. Um, who are your main competitors and how are you positioned in relation to them? Yeah, so ADC area is a very hot area and uh, essentially most major pharmas are developing ADCs and are of course competitors, but we prefer to see them as potential partners. They are looking for what we have, unique cancer targets that they can get rights and prevent competition on. Uh, if we look at the more nearby in the Nordic countries, Targinta is actually one of the leading ADC companies. Uh, we have a competitor in uh, Copenhagen, uh, ADC Endo, and they develop a similar product towards a similar cancer target and we are almost at in parallel in development stage. So that would be the most close competitor. And are you financed for the upcoming uh, activities in 2022? Uh, Targenta is a subsidiary, a subsidiary to Xentela. So we are financed by Xentela. And of course, uh, the spin off is planned. And once uh, Targenta is spin off or spun off, uh, we will uh, uh, take it to a public listing on First North. Mm -hmm. And uh, given the requirements, we need 12 months of funding. We need to have a uh, plan to have that in place before we start the listing. Mm -hmm. So all that will have to be communicated by Xentela and they are at the steering wheel in this. And as you're becoming an uh, independent company, what does that mean for your uh, organization and operations? Uh, in a way, not much, because we're already acting as an independent company. We have our own facilities, our own operations, and there is uh, complete separation of all activities. That said, we do collaborate and we will continue to collaborate. Uh, for example, the CEO of Xintela, Evi uh, Lundgren Ockelund, is uh, CSO at Targinta and we can use her scientific expertise at Targinta. And m m me, myself, I'm, uh, uh, I support Xintela with my medical expertise as a CMO at, uh, or chief medical officer at Xintela. And that will continue. Interesting and thank you for being here. Thank you so much.